What? Did you just see a picture of yourself? Is that why you're smiling? You just like shut down and then came back again. A hundred percent. Because it's recording now. Well, okay, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Dead Radio once again. With your main man, Bangy is dead. And today I've got a very special guest um, who's low key a friend of mine. <laughs> Actually, high key, high key. Um, very close friend, pretty much an older sister to me. Um, so yeah, I'd like to introduce yourself. Hey, madam, what's your name? Well, who are you? I didn't know I was allowed to say I'm your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know you would, but now I guess like we're quarantined, this is on camera. I might as well like tell the people the truth, right? It's honesty, right. honesty hour. It's honesty hour, <laughs> basically, in a nutshell, that's exactly what it is. Okay. My name's Anthea. How about oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's your name? What's your surname? Like, come on now, what do you do? Tell us about uh, yourself. My name is Anthea Polos. Okay. Some people know me as Anthea Knows Best. Okay. Um, what do I do, Bangy? I don't know. You know. No, you know best, so you have to know. <laughs> Um, I'm the co-owner of an agency called The Bread. Right. Um, so is that. And then uh, I'm a liker of things. Oh, wow. Uh, and a... Description? I'm a, trying to understand people, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that even, well, that's kind of like part of your job, because you need to understand, like, human behavior in order to excel um, at what you do, right? I guess. You know? I think a lot of people get by without understanding it. I understand it because I think I want to. Okay. Okay. You know I mean? So I actually studied sociology at I'm college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I did that because I'm interested in how people how people think and how they react and how situations and environments um, affect and inspire people and ultimately like help decision making and change. Right. So I never knew which direction that was going to take. But here we are. Right. But but you know, um so the for me that I find it so um intriguing as to how you didn't um study like the general thing that everyone else that's into what you do studied and you went to study sociology and politics and um, how you how you explain why you decided to go into that direction because it's pretty much the same thing and and when you explain it and I sit back and I actually think about it in a nutshell it actually really is because all you're basically trying to do as being in an agency is really just understanding people and understanding how people truly are in spaces and not necessarily what they paint themselves to be and that's how that's a, basically the biggest problem in terms of people being influencers because people perceive themselves to be someone that they're not whereas with what you studied um you can see through all of that then you really know what people are about you really know what they're not about so I'm, I'm 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 just like very curious as to how that has opened like your perspective in terms of what you do like you know in terms of having an agency in terms of creatively directing certain projects and executing them and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How does that like give you a different perspective? So, so I think the main thing is that is like trying to balance out who people think they are with who they want to be. Right. People, don't want to be people who are trying to be something or somebody don't want to be exposed to being something different. You know what I mean? If they're wanting right. to be a certain way, it's because that's something that they're ultimately aspiring to, I guess. You know what I mean? So yeah. what I'm always trying to do or what I'm thinking about or the way that I'm thinking about it is how do you how do you balance those like really deep down needs and sometimes um, challenges with who you think you are or who you want to be? You know what I mean? Nobody oh wants God. to be exposed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you, if you are like, let's say you... Um, dressing like head to toe and like super expensive stuff, right? You want people to think you're a certain way. I don't know what you're doing at home. You know what I mean? Or so I don't I really know break down your thing. I mean, if that's your thing, that should be your thing. You know what I mean? 
but I'm trying to understand like what is the what's driving you to dress like that or to speak like that or whatever that is, you know. Uh, uh, one thing I definitely picked up that you mentioned quite a lot is um, keeping an eye on what people do and like keeping an eye on how people uh, behave or what they wear or what they say or what they eat because do you think that's important? Why do you think that's important? Because no one ever tells the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one, well, 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 you got a point there. But, but I don't think like that. It's more like, it's more like sometimes people don't, they don't know, you know what I mean? So right. they don't know how to answer certain questions. They don't know how to explain certain things because some things are so um, part of life. You know what I mean? Mm. For me, like each little thing that you do in a day, you know, the routine of your day, the way that you engage with social media, the friends that you keep around you, the places you go, all these kinds of things that mostly you probably don't think that hard about, you know? To me, that's interesting mm. because those are all the unspoken things. Right. Those are the real things. That's that's the decisions you're making, and it's part of like who you are before you put on the, you know, so, 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 the mask so, or the outer yeah. world. I definitely, I, I I definitely agree to that. So that's why you definitely need to look around and really observe people around you and people that you want to work with, and see what they're truly about. Okay. So but, no. but also, but also, Bangy, the, the bottom line is, I just find it interesting. I just like, I just find it interesting what people do, like and how they make choices and how they think. It's just interesting to me. So if you can like figure it out in your life that you find something interesting that you want to know and that you enjoy, and then you find out how to make it your work, then you win, you know? 100%. You do, you do. Yeah, 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 because then some people say then it doesn't feel like work. Well, I think that the truth about that whole saying is that it does feel like work, but the days when you're tired, it makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make you feel like, yo, I'm working hard on this. But when you go home and you get into bed and you think about your hard day at work, it's like, oh, shit, yeah, I learned this new, I learned that, I learned this, I learned that, and that was like a really good experience. Totally. I, t- I totally get that. So now... You mentioned on one of the things that I watched that you have a life coach. A business coach. No, you mentioned something like about a life coach. How I think it was your ex boss. It is that he's a. Yeah, not a life coach, just like a mentor. Right. Okay. Yeah. What are the benefits of having a mentor? Like, why do you think it's important, and how has you having a mentor like changed your? your work ethic or how you execute stuff? So honestly, like, I never, it was never like, oh, I want to have a mentor and, like, I'm going to go find one and I call him, like, you know, all the time for advice. A lot of people have that and I guess that works for them um, for whatever reason. Like, I don't, I've never approached it like that. For me, it was my first boss um, and it was somebody who, uh, I think thought a lot like I thought, you know what I mean? But he was um, like a decade ahead of me at the time in terms of like thinking, you know? So even as like a junior at this agency, I would walk in with my laptop or I'd just sit down and say, you know, what do you think about this? Am I, am I thinking about things the correct way? And like oftentimes times that I was really doubting, um, Stop. doubting myself, and mm-hmm. doubting my process, he would kind of be like, no, you're, per- you're perfect. You know what I mean? You're already thinking about this in a different kind of a way. And even like um, when I eventually left that agency and I, and I left there to start my own thing, you know, and right. I think a lot of a lot of bosses or like previous employers or whatever could have been bitter about that. You know what I mean? But he was like, he was excited about it. You know, he was excited. And we would phone me all the time and say, you know, how's it going and what do you think about this and how's that working out for you and that kind of conversation, you know? And I suppose over the years we became more like friends, you know, um, than anything. But, but I definitely think like for anybody who's kind of thinking about that, it's just good to have somebody who's like walked the road before you. Right. 
you know, and it's not that they're going to tell you what to do. It's more like they're going to hear you out and say, you know, don't panic. This is a thing that people go through or you're thinking in the right way or you know what I mean? It's just more like a conversation with somebody who knows, you know? Very good to say that because, I mean, if we speak about it like that, then I guess that you low-key my mint. Because <laughs> I... <laughs> I call you about a lot of bullshit. Well, not necessarily bullshit, but things that I find very, I'm curious about. And there's times when, um, you know, there's times when, well, okay, this is the main aim of having this show and the main aim of having this interaction is that, you know, due to social media and the media as a whole, we've painted success in such a way that people get onto this journey and they get there with no trials or tribulations. And it's so amazing. It's so rosy. You know what I mean? And what we don't talk about enough is um, the, the problems people go through, the sacrifices people go through, um, the doubts that they go through, the depressed days, the, the days of not doing what you want to do because you can't. You, you, you're sacrificing everything else to get where you want to be. So, like, the main aim of this to show the other side, you know what I mean? The other side of what really happened and what really goes on in order for people to live their dreams or to ch even chase their dreams, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, going back to my point is that you basically are mentor then in that sense. Because there's, de there's a lot of times I feel like, yo, okay, yeah, uh, this, 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 this might not be for me, you know what I mean? Like, I might just have to go get a job. And you're always there like, yo, nah, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I guess you went through the same shit? Yeah, I think the only difference, Bang, is like, you, uh, in a lot of ways, are more, you're like braver than me in a lot of ways, you know what I mean? You have to put a lot more, You like what you have to do takes a lot more of like your personal self and like puts it out to the world. You know what I mean? Oh. So oftentimes, like, even when we speak, we I'm just like speaking in like human ways. You know what I mean? I don't know oh. if I always can like guide you on like the very specific stuff, but I think like, I think, like I think that it's, I think that what you're saying is, yeah, the point is that you need somebody who, who thinks similarly but can challenge you. You know what I mean? Right. It's pointless okay. if you have someone who thinks exactly the same. So say like, you know, like with Andrew, like my business partner, uh -huh. we think similarly but are very different, you know? So right. there's times that we'll completely agree and there's other times that we are like on total different ends of the spectrum, you know? Mm -hmm. And we'll find right. it out and we'll talk and discuss until we reach a middle ground. And that's so key, you know what I mean? I don't want to be in business with someone who, who like agrees with me at every corner. That You know what I mean? It yeah, makes no sense. You need somebody who balances out your thought process but understands you and can think how you're thinking, you know what I mean? Correct. I, I totally I mean, agree. like a yes man, that's, you know what I mean? Totally agree. I think it goes it goes as far as relationships as well, where I don't I don't get people that would rather be with people that agree with them all the time because that means no growth. Like that's absolutely no growth. If you're always saying yes, if you're always agreeing, if you're always if you're always on the same page, there's something wrong. I, yes, but also sometimes like I think um, I don't know. I'm definitely like not a relationship expert, but <laughs> as you know. But um, but I sometimes think like it depends on the on the person, you know what I mean? There are people out there who want to be challenged, uh -huh, and there are uh -huh. people out there who, when they get home at the end of a day, just want to feel like yes. we're on the same page, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I'm also just like I don't think there's a right and a wrong to what kind of relationship you're in, you know what I mean? It's about what you want to feel about it and how you want to be, you know what I mean? There's probably a lot to be said for being in a relationship where people are not like arguing and debating the whole time you know what i mean right. it's probably right. like it's probably quite nice i don't know i've never had it but, <laughs> um, never had it why do you make it seem like you've never been in love no i've never had that i've never had someone like in a i've never been in a relationship with someone who agrees with me 
Oh, so you guys like, are only like, like party ever in my life. Like it's just the whole time, you know. I'm about to tell you why. Um, hey. because you have a very dominant character, dude. Like you're a very dominant character. You, you you're very sure about what you want. You're very sure about how you want it. Like people that are so specific can't always get people that agree with them. That that's just the fact. Specific at all. Dude, what do you mean? You're specific. You're very specific. What do you mean? Specific you got what? supreme the supreme that. You want these shoes. You dress like that. You're always wearing that all black. Mean I want that's... other person to have it. No, 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 no. Not even about it. It's just that you're a very specific person. Like you like. Think so crazy you... here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear this side too. Sweet. Um, and stuff. Rainy, I'm just saying, I like things. I have personal taste, but I don't expect someone else to. I, I like it. Would be cool if someone could look at something and go, Oh, that's so dope, that thing that you got. But I don't need you to have it. And I definitely don't need you to like aspire to have it. You can right. like your own things. Maybe your favorite thing in the world is like fucking, I don't know, collecting candles. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just think, I like, think- do you, you know? I get you. Okay, so now I obviously um, watched it somewhere that your brother is like obsessed with hip hop, right? And that, not necessarily obsessed, but he was hip hop like <laughs> way back then when you were still young. Would you I, say that? Say that again? What are you gonna say? So it, it was definitely like where they were at at the time. So, so just to give like some context, my brothers are like 10 and 13 years older than me. Right. So at the time of me growing up, hip hop was very like, which, you know, which was uh, like the 90s, early 90s even. Mm-hmm. That was like hip hop's time, you know what I mean? And if right. you are like, if you're like an 18 year old boy at the time, then that's what you're into, you know what I mean, I think? So, like, okay. yeah, that was definitely, like, what they were into, and it was definitely their, like, uh, fashion aesthetic. I think I even have, like, some photos behind me where it, like, shows, you know? Right. Would you say that influenced you in any way? Like, in the direction you're at, which is something we're going to get into, like, further on? 100%. So, like, the thing that influenced me most, okay, right. hear me out, like, music videos. Mm-hmm. Like all I remember as a kid um, is like my brother used to record this like music show. So back, I mean, just realize this is like apartheid days and sanctions and also like stuff that was happening here. You know, there wasn't like MTV and VH1 at the time. I'm talking about is like there used to be a show called the Toyota Top Twenty. <laughs> uh, <laughs> on SABC and like a family friend of ours was like the producer of that show. And he would like often share a lot of stuff with my brothers, like musically and from videos and that. And I'll remember like old, uh, you know, like first Snoop Dogg videos and like even, I mean, this sounds so lame now, but like, you know, the video for Informa, which was like at the time was a big hit, you know. Right. Um, and then as the years went by, like I think I was about 11, 10 or 11 when, when we got like MTV and it was like, MTV Europe, you know, so that brought like a completely different spin on stuff, you know what I mean? So yes, hip hop was like a global culture, uh, but there was a whole lot of a different like vibe coming through from MTV Europe. There was a lot of like um, garage and a lot of this like kind of deep house and and that started to influence me as well, you know? But Mm -hmm. but really, I would sit and watch music videos, even from like as young as I can remember, like morning, noon and night, that's what I would do, you know, I was... Like music obsessed. So like I would see how people like dress in music videos and like that for me was like, you know, it was a whole other world. Like we didn't have the internet and like magazines that were like, you know what I mean? It was just, we didn't have like that. So. Okay. I think we get that. So. Yeah. Do you want to see a cute picture, Bangy? Yeah, let's see it. So I have two brothers. This is me. I was eight in this picture, which means okay. my brother was 18. We were at uh, Disney World. 
Yeah, that's so cute. Oh, look at the style. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, right? Yeah, I can see definitely. My brother's basically wearing like a durag bandana, and I'm like, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like so yes, picture. Why don't you look? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now hip hop is there, and then look, I'm gonna do things. I'm gonna chop, cut, cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. Yeah, so okay. now you end up being a manager. Can I say manager? Like um, music lead. Yeah. Can I say manager? Can I call uh, you a manager? You can. I mean, I don't do that anymore. It was just like a an experiment. Right. I think. You think you, <laughs> like, do you think you did it well? Um, not for really. No, who did you manage? For those that, who don't know. Uh, Stilo. Okay, okay. So, um, I think like in my in my head, it was always like something I wanted to do, and it wasn't like something I really knew much about. It was just like, you know, him and I were friends. We would talk a lot. Um, it would be it started off with simple things like, oh, you know, can you help me like do an invoice or um. Can you help me like set up this presentation for a meeting that I want to go to? Blah blah blah. You know stuff like that. So we started doing that, and like over a process of time, we would like do more and more things, and then I would like start to pick up stuff. You know what I mean? So um, I was definite. I was definitely like present for a lot of things, um, and I think I um, was probably more useful in just like uh, chatting things through with him and understanding things kind of a way. But in terms of like the practicalities of uh, management and like going out and finding the deals and doing that kind of stuff, it's like people really underestimate the skill of pe- of the, of doing that. You know what I mean? It's right. hard. It's hard work. And like people who are successful music managers, it's Shout you know, it's it's impressive. Shout out to them. Seriously. And I think like yes, if I if it was like my full time job. Mm-hmm. to dedicate myself to like understanding that process that would be different but you know as you know it wasn't so okay do you, you, you think you kill it i mean let's say in the duration that you were his manager would you say you, you, you like you, you you broke down a lot of barriers and made like some ground um no <laughs> i think i came in i think the thing is that like i came in, i was like there for the right time so the time that I began working with him was the time that he became popular in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Bigger, bigger like, and more, um, like, more brand interest and all that kind of stuff, you know? So, so in a lot of ways, like, I think it was timing. You right, know, so right. sometimes people look at the situation and go, but look what you did. But, you know, truthfully, he was going to do that stuff with or without me. You know, that's the reality. So, like, one or two things here and there maybe, but but definitely not, like, the big moves, you know, and that's that's the truth. Like, so. Yo, please just give me a minute. Let me just switch on the slide. I feel okay. like you can't see the dance there. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, just that has definitely you never turn this light off here. This one. No, nah, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Yo, I'm so sorry. That has never ever happened before. <laughs> um, I never really leave. I find it very weird. Um, uh-huh. like okay. leave while talking to someone. It's Are me. You... I don't give up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow oh wow okay so right so you basically saying that it would have happened regardless so hold on the light the thunder's going for it yeah. okay yeah so tell me something you've been in Joburg your whole life no okay i, I wasn't i mean kind of I was in Joburg. I was born here. Um, I went to Cape Town when uh-huh. I finished school. And I went to university there and I started like working there. So I was in Cape Town okay. for eight, eight years. Okay. Uh, and I left 
I think it was like Feb 2012 when I came back to Joburg. So, yeah, so kind of, yes, but with like an eight euros in Cape Town in between that. Right. So, when, when let's say before you left for Cape Town and when you came back, right, you were obviously not necessarily in the streets, but you were well aware of what's going on in Joburg, like in terms of the culture, if I could put it like that. I hate the word, the culture, but in terms of the culture and what's happening and what people are doing and who's hot and who's not and what not, what not, what not. So what, what, what do you see from, let's say, after you come back from Cape Town and now? What are the differences that you see like in terms of people on the street that are trying to get into these high opportunities and are looking for positions and roles to play in comparison to how people are doing it like right now? You know, do, do you get what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know if I'm answering this right, but hear me out anyway. When I like came back here, a lot of reason why I wanted to come back was because like I would come every 10 days or so for work. Um, right. So I was here like kind of a lot. And I never, when I left, I was like, I'll never come back to Joburg. <laughs> I was like, I will never be back, you know? Um, and I would come for work and like the more I came and the more I, started to see how things were in Joburg and like just people's mentality, the more I was like, maybe, maybe I should be back here. Right. And the one uh, thing that, yeah. I, that I think a lot back then anyway, is that there was a lot of like, um, different groups of people, subculture. There's a lot of different <laughs> groups of people that were doing a lot of varying things, right? Super different. Some people were working on like small clothing labels, some were like photography projects, some were musicians. All this kind of stuff but there was a lot of um like integration and crossover you know so people were like collaborating a lot at that time you know um it was a time when going back into the city and back into the cbd siri was like recording me um so there was a lot of like everybody just getting together and excited about the prospects and the possibilities and a lot of collaboration and no one really cared what your background was. It was just like, Hey, let's, let's work on this project or let's do this thing, you know? Um, right, right. and in a lot of, and in a lot of ways, I think if you, if you think about, um, even just the idea of like boys and bucks, for example, who were like super popular at that time, it was okay. like, they, I think in a lot of ways, um, represented how people were feeling and that was like, each person came with a different skill set, you know? graphic design or like um, computer visuals or dance or lyrical value or whatever the case was, you know, but everybody came with something and that was like very indicative of that time, you know, and it wasn't like so much about what you have because you couldn't get that much, you know, we didn't have access to as much stuff. Now it's, it feels like um, a lot of things are very more about like, what you have and where you went and not always so much about what it is you you're doing and what you're trying to put out and your moves. You know what I mean? There's like a very, there's like at that time people who are like, I guess celebrities now, they, they weren't then, you know what I mean? Back then celebrities were like people on is a dingo and like backstage and stuff. You know what I mean? They weren't like pop culture, like celebrities. Whereas now like a lot of people are like, considered celebrity you know and i think that becomes it feels like very um out of reach for a lot of people you know so right. i think like for me there was that there was this kind of like very small moment in time of creative collaboration and i believe that it happens all the time and i know it continues to happen but i think the scale and the size of it is much different now you know what i mean i think i think influencer culture has done um, a little bit of damage in a way in that it's made some people believe that they don't need anybody else. You know what I mean? So bigger reach. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have a bigger reach. Yeah, they sort of like, <laughs> I don't numbers, need, you know? Yeah, because numbers don't really reflect your influence. I don't believe that. I personally don't think um, no. someone that has like a, a thousand followers has more influence than ha someone that has a thousand followers because we don't know who they are outside of social media. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't know how I behave with other people. You don't know 
who looks up to me for information outside of social media. So how are we basing our whole existence on this thing that's just digital, like it's in the yeah. sky, which yeah. is a big ass mindfuck for me. Like it's a crazy mindfuck. If but, I think like, of like one of the most influential people I know, they are someone who is like works in politics, mm-hmm. has virtually no social media following, is definitely not like really um, worried about coolness in any kind of a way. But if I think of the impact that that individual has on the people around them and on the on like political ideology or strategies or the way things happen, for me that's like an influential person. You know what I mean? Uh, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. Okay, so now you go from being an intern um, at an agency and you're approached by Andrew and Nick where they actually just want to. <laughs> the story is very interesting. I find it hilarious. Where they approach you, where they just want you to freelance for them a couple of times and then they end up calling you again and they're like, yo, actually, we want you to be a partner in this. And you say no because you're very uh, used to having a job, obviously. But before I get into the other question, I'm really curious about this. So what's that one moment that you like? I actually don't mind getting getting a salary because you know people like being comfortable when it comes to a check. Like I'm getting money every every month, whether I'm working, whether I am, I'm still getting paid. So how did you get yourself to get out of that mindset? Okay, so I'll tell you a true story. <laughs> Right. So, so part of it was um, Nick and Andrew already had this like idea and they were going to do it. And when I said I didn't want to lose my salary, they basically said that the two of them will take a salary cut so that I can continue getting like my full salary. Crazy. At that point, though, so I, so I also did that. But at that point, I was a minority shareholder. So I, you know what I mean? I wasn't at that point, not now would be different, but at that point I wasn't an equal shareholder with them, you know? Mm -hmm. So in a lot of ways, um, the two of their, the two of them like deciding to do that and to sacrifice for, from themselves was a big step. You know, they both had like income coming in from other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, they were going to continue on with their other work. I didn't have any like other, I don't know, side jobs, hustles, what or whatever. Made, what made you, what what do you think made them consider you? Um, definitely, yes. definitely, Andrew and I wanted to do something before. Like we had spoken before about he used to have We Are Awesome, and we had spoken before about me like going to work there full time, um, for him. You know, and over the years we had like talked about a lot of possibilities and stuff that we had never done. Um, and Nick and I also were just, you know, we were friends and we, we got on great. I suppose that was kind of like as much as we thought. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what made them decide that. I guess you have to ask them. Well, okay, true. True. <laughs> I just thought maybe you feel like you had like a, a strong point that no one else had. Like you understood. Um, you had a higher taste. You know, because you need that in the ladies. You need someone with a higher taste. I think it was, I mean, I think they, they definitely, like, understood that I um, understood things and, like, people in a different kind of a way than they did. I think yeah. that's for sure. Um, but bang, like, to be honest, you know, we, we just wanted to have fun as well. You know, fun was a big part of it. So when you're doing something and then someone's your friend and you go, like, hey, this thing would probably be way more fun with, uh, with them than without them. You know what I mean? I do. I do. Some things are not all that serious. You know, sometimes it's just like, yo, fuck it, we're going to do this. Let's just let's just throw a caution to the wind and try, you know? Most of the greatest things always start like that, if, if I'm being quite honest. Because I watched a lot of interviews and documentaries where a lot of the greatest ideas never started as the big idea. You know what I mean? Like, they always start very organic, then they start very playfully, if, it's, if that's even a word. But it, 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 it's no one sitting at a boardroom and like, okay, we're trying to do this. And this is how we're going to do it. Like, people yeah. literally just play around with things and, like, it just let it, let it flow. Okay, so now, is Nick still part of the company? No. So, Nick moved to Berlin, and Andrew and I bought him out. 
uh, when he left, which was maybe two years, two or three years ago. I can't recall now. Um, okay. Okay. And we went through like quite a tricky time as friends, you know, and as with anything, like when a relationship ends, you know, it's got its moments. Um, yeah. And I think just over the, definitely over the last year, we've really like, we worked it out, we talked it out, we figured it out. And like, I would say our friendship is like back to where it started, you know, so I'm grateful for that. Right, right. So now the bread, why the bread? Like why the name the bread? What's uh, the so, the, so the name was Nick's idea. Right. I think the name was all kind of like Nick's thinking. Um, and, and, and a lot of that was like based on the big idea, which we do a little bit now, but you know, it's not as much as like maybe we intended at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that the business would just be like the three of us and we would be the bread. Um, and all the like creative partners that we used um, to kind of like create the perfect picture or the perfect whatever would be like the ingredients to our sandwich. Right. You know? So the bread was like, it was that. It was always kind of like, we'll be on the outside of it. Um, and That's everything amazing. else and everybody yeah. in the community around us will fill it up. And yes, yes we, we do that a lot, but it's obviously like the big idea of um, six years ago is, you know what I mean? Things change. Dude, all, all, all the time. Because it sounds at the time, you know? That's no key why I hate business plans, but yo, I don't hope anyone else that's listening here ends up not liking business plans because of me. But I, I don't personally think business plans are, are realistic. Um, I don't think they're realistic because what I've learned with business is that everything changes so drastically that if you're always looking at your business plan as things change, it's bound to really knock you the fuck off because like you will be, you will get to a point where everything that's happening around you does not correspond with what you've got written down. You know what I mean? Well, I think the thing is like, the problem is the word, the word business plan. Right. I think like you have to think about, so we once had to go through this process. We, we had like, we got a business coach who we still work with today. And I think he was like, initially we just drove him crazy because he would say like, do this and try to do that and try to do this. And we were like, dude, we're not doing that. So, but thanks. Anyway. <laughs> we were like, pay him to just listen to us. Like say we're not listening to his advice. Um, and I think like, you know, now I think it's like five years later we've been with him. He laughs at us. He's like, you guys don't listen to anything I say. Um, but I think the thing is, the one process that he took us through, which I think was very valuable, was like looking at or saying, where do you want to be in five years time? You know, or what does it look like in your business in five years? Like, just from a practical point of view, like, do you want to have um, like 100 people on the staff? Do you want to work like, with big business or do you want to work with like startups? Um, you know, do, whatever, like whatever stuff you put in place. And I think that everybody has those ideas in their head, you know, some people write them down and they call them a business plan. And some people just think about them, you know, you right. have to, you've got to think about something because you're in this business for a reason, you know? So Andrew and I may say things to each other, like, you know, we don't want to have a big agency. We never want to have that. You know, we never want to walk into an office of 50 people. It's not, it's not what we want. You know what I mean? Um, we want to be able to put out the work that we're putting out and like consistently improve that and work with people we want to work with. But I don't believe that I need to have a staff of 50 people to do that. You know, we like, you know, about, you know, what our office is like, we like being able to like talk with every single person that's there and know what's going on and like have everybody's input. I don't want to be like sending a brief to people and then they go and sit in another room and I never know whatever happened with that, you know? Considering it that you are in the other room in the brief is shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like, you know, that's, it's not something we've ever wanted and I don't uh, think that that would change, but right. you know what I mean? You've got to know what you want in the end of the day. You've got to go in knowing like, I want to one day earn this much salary or I want to one day buy the building my office is in or whatever. I don't know. You know, different people have different things. Right. I, I, I never really hear you ever talking about money though. If you get what I mean, which gives me the, the impression that it's not really the motive. Would you say it's not? Or like you have different well, other motives in terms of being not, a business? It's not the motive, but I wouldn't carry on running a business that didn't make money because 
that wouldn't be a successful business, you know? Right. So, 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 I mean, you so shouldn't have to talk about it all the time. It should be, it should be a business that runs, you know? And if it's not a business that runs in, you gotta, you gotta close it, I think. I don't know, it's you know? Problem. You've gotta give yourself a time frame that says, well, this business is not making money. We're gonna close, and maybe that day comes, and you know, I pray it doesn't. But if it does, it does, and that's life, you know. Yeah, but what's the more? Like, what's your end goal? Like, let's say twenty years from now, and you're looking at the bread. What, what would you want? Or yeah. you're looking at Anthea. What, what you have achieved as Anthea? I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not much of, of a futurist, bangy. Yeah, with the same guy. I, look, I see, I see head almost all the time. And I think that's why I've got a, like crazy anxiety um, because I think about the future like almost all the time. Um, so I, I, I see the future, but I don't see where I should be like in 10 years, 20 years. I know what kind of lifestyle I should be living. <laughs> you know well, that's what, what you need. need. Not the one you should be living, the one you want to be living. That's not the same yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. Why, why, why not the same thing? Because what you should want may be different than what you want. Women like my age, people will say, I should want um, a house that I own, uh, some kids, a husband, um, some kind of pension. I don't know what I should have. There's probably a lot of things I should have, but it's right. not like, it's not what I want to have. You know what I'm saying? So it's, you gotta you gotta think about what's right in your mind for you. Yeah. Now that you've spoken about it, I'm really curious. Why isn't that something you want? Like why isn't that something you see foresee in your future? Like you in a big house with not even in the future, like let's say tomorrow. Why is it, why don't you see yourself being married with like two kids for argument's sake? So being married is whatever. That's could happen or not happen. But um I don't think I've ever like really wanted kids at any time in my life that I can remember. Um, I have like a niece and nephew who I adore and I like hang out with them all the time. They're like in those pictures behind, you know what I mean? And that's cool, that's cool for me. Um, it's never like been, it's never been something I've thought about, you know what I mean? And I will never say never because I know, you know, life, life can change and you don't know, but it's not like been my intention, you know? Um, in terms of like a big house, uh, I don't know, dude, I'm, I like small faces. Like spaces that are too spaces that are too big give me anxiety. Oh, really? Yeah, I like that. I like compact space. Hmm. I also like compact spaces because you can actually like do a lot with them, but by doing not very much. If you get what I mean, like you don't have to yeah. overdo it. I think it's just that like I feel con in control in a smaller space. Right. Like I know exactly what I have, and I know exactly where it is, so and it's like, like it's comfortable for me. You know what I mean? I like I like it. So yeah, so you like being in control? Oh, yes, you're a boss. You're a boss. <laughs> you most definitely like being in control. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? I guess. I mean. <laughs> It's not an no, I guess. It's sometimes like, I don't always like to be in control. Sometimes I wish someone else, I mean, not in work, just in life. Sometimes in life, I just wish someone else would be like, hey, we're going to go on holiday. This is what's going to happen. You know, like I have some friends that I travel with a lot. And I, can, I like traveling with them because they plan everything. And you're just they're like, okay, yeah. I'm coming. But I like traveling with them because we get on great, you know. But it's always right. easy when someone goes, I'm just like, I'm always like, you just plan everything and then tell me like how much it's gonna cost and like when I should be there, you know? Like I don't right. like planning always. So that's why I'm saying like, I wouldn't I think I wouldn't hate it if I was like in a relationship where someone could like take a bit of control. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally you know? get you. Don't worry. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> don't worry, your the future whoever's listening, so <laughs> They might just reach out to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm messing around. I'm messing around. I'm sure. Okay. So, uh? I'm sure. <laughs> okay, so now, trials and tribulations. Or from where the bread is 
from how it was to what it is today, what are the sacrifices that you've had to go through? Um, like, what, what do you think has been one of the toughest sacrifices you had to make in order for your company to be what it is today? Um, definitely, like, not taking a salary for a substantial period of time. Um, and not in the okay. very beginning, but once Andrew and I had bought the shares from Nick, um, we had like a fair amount of debt we had to pay off. Um, it was a bad time. It was a bad time for a long time. Uh, you know, right. so so definitely that, like definitely financial. Um, and I think, I think the other side of it is that, you know, often people around you, it's the same thing about what I'm saying about the life you should have, you know. You have a lot of people right. around you, they work at like law firms and banks and big businesses and that, you know, so they earn big salaries and they have fancy cars and like, their life looks like an adult. You know? Right. I'm and sure you can, can hear that, hey? You can hear that. It's the hail. Wow, yeah, it's the hail, dude. I can't believe it. It's so nice. Wow. Anyway. Carry on, carry on, carry on. Uh, um, yeah, so for a long time it was like I felt um, everyone around me had the life I was supposed to have and I was just like playing catch up. Right. You know, and, and it took a bit of time to like get onto an even footing with that and to feel like, you know, okay, how about it? Yeah. It's tough, you know, like people don't realize like mentally it's a it's a challenge a lot of the time, you know, and a lot of especially like, you know, you may have family around you who kind of thinking like, you know, what the fuck are you doing? You know? I see you waking up every morning. I see you on your phone the whole day, on your laptop. Why are you playing? <laughs> so like, so I get the that. So like, you get it all the I time. That, yeah, I get that all the time where my mother literally, I think my mother thinks every time I'm on my phone, now, I'm like playing Candy Crush or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and she doesn't get how... I've made like almost 90% of the money I've ever made is actually just like literally me being on my phone. Like literally, like literally. And I've, I've come to understand that all, an older generation won't actually understand that because to them, a phone is always something to communicate with people on. Like it wasn't used as a tool to make money. Like, I, like our parents were not making money on phones unless they were talking to bosses or having conference calls or whatever which are highly unlikely but i think the other thing is like i obviously spend a lot of time like out with people and doing things and dropping off stuff and meeting people and that you know so like one day i bumped into my mom she was with my niece my niece is five so i bump into them in sanson and i'm on my way to go and meet someone actually at the van store for them to like pick up product you know right but right. like it's so funny because my niece is like what are you doing here you know auntie auntie like what's happening you know my mom <laughs> my mom she's, she's joking you know but my mom is like she's like yeah i don't you know auntie auntie she doesn't work much she just relaxes <laughs> <You know? laughs> she's just like, so i know she's joking you know but like so my niece she's like what is saying to me she's like she wants to be the boss she's like you know don't you just like relax and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that. Look, I won't lie. That's a nice part about it. But the days when you're not relaxing are the most stressful. Dude, you day. wake up. You want to wake up. Let me tell you the most stressful thing in the entire world is waking up, waking up in the middle of the night and realizing it's like payday in five days and you have to pay salaries to people and you don't have any money. And you just like... <laughs> Pray to God that the person who owes you is going to pay you before payday arrives. Because if they don't, like, you have to go out and try to find the money. And I'm not talking about paying yourself. You've got to go out and find the money to pay the people who work for you. Because they rely on you. You know what I mean? That is fear. That is, like, nothing will drive you like that kind of fear. Right. I can imagine. Because I stay up. I, I, I have sleepless nights like that. But I don't have. Um, when I owe suppliers and I. I'm I'm literally on zero, and I'm I'm like I'm 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 the type of businessman that does not like to decline on a payment if I haven't discussed it with you. I think it's a, it's, it's just a bad practice. Um, I want everyone who does business with me to know that I'm good for it, um, yeah. so that when I can't, when I'm not good for it or when I can't pay for it, they know that no, this guy is good for it because he's always 
um, back themselves up when it couldn't afford. I can see it's not when I can't pay people, like, or can't pay supplies, because it's just like, what the hell am I going to tell these people? Because I can't tell you on the day. Like, that, that's terrible business practice. Like, yeah. terrible business practice. But people just don't realize. They're always telling me, like, you know, a lot of people tell me, oh, I want to start an agency. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, like, I'm like, yeah, do it, you know. But at the same time, dude, you don't know what you're in for. You just don't, you just, you know, like realizing suddenly like that, oh, you know, it's VAT, you've got to pay VAT this month and suddenly you owe like, you know, more money than you've seen. Now you got to pay, you know what I mean? It's like VAT, tax and salary and this thing and that thing and rent and your phone. It's just like, it's not as simple as it looks, you know, like even when you're fucking up, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. I don't think anything. Look, I, I personally don't think anything with having come is easy. Yeah. Like, like I've come to a point where I've understand that I've understood it, and now it's me and this thinking is one. Like I don't think anything with having come is easy at all. Whether it's love, whether it's a life partner, whether it's success, whether it's the greatest relationship with your family, like that doesn't come easy whatsoever and people that think it does i think out of touch with reality because that's I, I just think it's impossible yeah right yeah. Or, am i crazy to think that no it, it I, i'm not crazy to think it but i do think sometimes like if things if if in the case that things do come easily like sometimes that's okay you know what i mean don't feel like it's not right because it was too easy yeah. You know what I mean? Just don't get into the habit of thinking that it has to be hard. Like it does not all things have to be hard, you know? Right. If it comes right. if it comes easy, like be grateful and enjoy it, you know. Right. Right. True. 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 Okay, so now I see you're not very big on social media. Obviously you're big on you're big on Instagram. Um not necessarily big, big, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're on Instagram, like you're you're you have an Instagram profile. I use uh, it. And you have Facebook. Yeah, and you use it, but you don't have Twitter. Why don't you have Twitter? I, I, I like to hear your because I'm... What do you mean? But you never use it? Because, like, I don't know. I, I generally I, feel like the things I feel like saying are, like, no one else needs to hear it. I mean, you don't know that until you tweet it. No, I'm just like, I yeah. I sometimes say things that I know is not going to be like well received. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing is that I think the other thing is that realizing like, I do have Twitter bangy, first of all. Wow, I did not I, know that, dude. Like, yeah, I'm not like no, it's there. Uh, yeah. I think the other thing you realize is like when you own a business is that right. you don't know you don't always know who's listening. You know what I mean? So I do have you do have to be a little careful about. All the time. Uh, you do have to be a bit careful about what you say and things that you're saying and where and how you say them. You know, like, you, you can't you can't just go balls to the wall and like I mostly complain, as you know. And like yeah. I always feel like complaining consistently is like gonna be of value, you know? Yeah. So I rather try to like I you know, I do spend a bit of time on Twitter, but I use it more for just like listening and reading other people than I do for engaging. I did I did at one point, but yeah, not so much now. I told I, look, I for one know exactly what to talk about. I'm sure you know I know what to talk about because I've I I tweet what I'm thinking and I delete it probably like two minutes after I tweeted it. That's why like I don't that's why I don't even get on there because I know myself. Yeah. I I just I find the pleasure sometimes in tweeting and deleting it. Like um. I, I, I I know for a fact there's only someone watching though. I know for a fact there's only someone reading something. I know for a fact like I know a lot of things. Like, I, I always know there's someone. Like, text it to one of my friends and I like, complain at them for ten minutes. <laughs> and also I'll say this: being like on Twitter is like I mean it sounds cheesy to say, but it's like a real skill to be like good at Twitter. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of no. people that are, like fast with their words and they're smart and they are good at Twitter and that's cool. That's their yeah. thing. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, me getting on there saying like some nonsense here and there is not going to be helpful. Yeah. Dude, just going to show up being like shit at Twitter. 
Yeah, probably probably gonna see. You see this? I, I told you guys this girl is stupid. <laughs> also, but, I'm just also, saying. Man, you think, hey. The thing is, like, you have to. I think with Twitter, it's like you have to be present a lot, you know, um, and you uh -huh. have to be. And I, as you probably know, I'm not always so present with social media. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm sometimes lurking and I'm sometimes not. I mean, I think people are going crazy with me now in this lockdown time because. Everybody's trying to set up calls and house parties and Zooms and like all the social stuff. And I, I'm telling you, like, I hate it. Of like, I don't, do. I do not want to, and it's not, I don't, don't hate my friends. I love them. But like, I don't feel that we need to like sit six of us on a call when we like yes. never talk. And, you know, now we've got to sit on this call for fucking hour long and talk about everybody's life. I, I don't, you know. Yeah. So, I get it. It's too much. Twitter's like but, too much for me. Yeah. I want to ask you something that might be a bit, um, I wouldn't necessarily say weird, but it's probably not a question you've heard before on, on an interview. Nah, not an interview, on a discussion. So now, okay. look, you've been in South Africa pretty much your whole life, um, since you were born up to up to today, right? Um, and I really want to know how you think um, white privilege has um, not necessarily made the difference, but what, 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 what's your understanding or what is, or what does white privilege mean to you? In terms of my life, in terms of my own life. In terms of your life and in terms of just the, 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 the definition of white privilege, you know what I mean? Like, um, would you say it has changed? Um, you've you've seen more of what the world has to offer at a young age because of that privilege. Yeah. You have more so, access to opportunities currently, yeah. um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like what's so, your understanding of white privilege? So definitely like, and it's just so tricky because we, we say white privilege, but there's a lot of like other kids who had similar to me, you know, who right. would, but I would say, okay, let's talk about it like that. Um, right. certainly, certainly from the standpoint of like the education that I was able to have. Um, yeah, but and look, I, and I, to, I don't want you to get it. I don't want you to be scared about anything. Like, no, I'm not scared. I, I need I'm you to scared. I'm gonna take, it through, if... take it through life stages. Okay, cool. So, so certainly like when I was a kid, it was like the school I went to and I was lucky right. in the way that it was a private school that was open to all people like all races right. even at that time. And that was like, was during apartheid. And right. so for me, like I was lucky to be with kids of all races from, right. from six years old, you know? Whereas like there was other kids around me that wouldn't have had that opportunity. They were in like separated schools and that kind of thing, you know? So certainly like from right. that, from that point of view, like a hundred percent, you know, like I was never right. in a segregated space, although Obviously, in retrospect, and the older you get, the more you realize, like, for those kids of other races, they felt obviously different in that situation. But it's only when you get older you're able to realize that, you know? Right. Um, so, so certainly from that, certainly that, definitely, like, having the ability to, to travel from an early age. Um, and I've been traveling, like, consistently and as much. And you know that's a very important thing to me, uh, to see how yes. other people live. And that's, like that's allowed me to think how I think and to shape how I do things. Um, yeah. So, so certainly like from that standpoint, and then there's obviously like the, there's some basic life things like, you know, just um, se security and like a safe home and all these kinds of things that a lot of kids like grew up not having, you know, and like someone who drives you to school and all these like, you know what I mean? Just basic life things that I think like you grew up thinking are normal and then you realize most people don't ever have that, you know? Right, right. And then, like, um, what was I gonna say? For sure, like, in terms of starting a business, and I know a lot of people out there in their mind, um, our parents like gave us the money to start this business, and and they supported us and all this stuff. Like that never happened. So none of right. us ever like took a cent from our families, uh, nor were we ever offered any money by them. Um, mm. and and when and in times that we had like. In times that we needed to borrow money, we went to friends of ours and borrowed it, you know? Right. Um, and we never told our family that we owed money. 
you know, I ended up telling them five years later that I had borrowed this huge sum of money from a friend, you know? Um, so, so not that, but certainly like knowing that if this whole thing didn't work out, I wouldn't be on the street, you know? I could go and like live with my mom or I could go and like take this like vast education I've had and go and apply for a job, you know? So I think that like, that is a, that is a reality that not like from the point of like getting money, but just like from knowing that you'll be safe and like having, right. having the like, having the guts to take chances because you can, because you don't have like a whole family of people at home that's relying on your paycheck. You know what I mean? And like, and and you know like I and I think part of part of my distancing um, from like social media and that over the years is also like it's a very like tricky I like walk a very tricky line you know so I'm a white female and I live in this country and nothing that I do is really geared towards a white female you know what I mean right. it's like well I mean I can't say that it's geared at young people and white, like white females are not that many of the population when it comes to young people, you know? So it's a very, like, it's a very thin line of like, um, being a part of something and realizing like the distance that sometimes you need to have from it, you know? Right. Yeah. You, you said something in the beginning though, that kind of, that's why, I, that's why I was actually saying something like, uh, don't be scared or relax. Um, you, 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 you kind of, um, it's not necessarily insinuate. I hate the word insinuate because the, the word insinuate sounds so spicy. Um, but you, you insinuate. Like, uh, so I yeah. feel like insinuate is so spicy. It sounds so spicy. You know what I mean? Um, but you kind of made it seem um, like it's not necessarily white privilege and we could possibly call it class privilege. Yeah, you know so I mean? but, but but the thing is, so even even in saying even in saying that, um, there may be someone who's like, who's grown up the same way as me, uh, you know, there may be like yeah. a black female who's grown up the same way as me, but it's not going to be the same. You know what I mean? Let's say we've had the same path in terms of education and like um, travel and all these kinds of things. It's not going to be the same because the way that the world, the way that like the way that that woman has to like proceed in the world, is going to be different than how we I have to proceed. So we're both women, which is a challenge already. But like right. existing in the world, like I can acknowledge that existing in the world as a black female is already a challenge on its own, regardless of, um, regardless of like things that you've had. Right. You know what I mean? So that's why, like, yeah. even it's even as I started to say that, I kind of backtracked out of it because that's you know what I mean. It is what it is. Like, just by virtue of being a white person, whether you're like whether you're wealthy or not, doesn't matter. Like, what what spectrum you're on in terms of wealth. Like, just existing as a white person is easier than existing as a black person. And I think that that is you know that's that is a truth universally acknowledged. You know what I mean? Right. So that yeah. you know what I mean? that is just the truth. We can have the same things, we can grow up in the same house, we can do everything the same, but when we like step out in the world and we present ourselves and we do certain things, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna possibly have to fight slightly less, you know. So that's the world. Right. Um so um, I, can't, I, I won't really say last question, but last thing I wanted to talk about, I don't like, I don't, I don't like, I don't want it to sound like an interview. I think interviews are so whack, bro. Um, so last thing I wanted to talk about, right? Um, obviously with you not being very active on Twitter, but apparently only now I find out that you're on Twitter. Um, what do you think about cancel culture? I'm very curious to find out like your view on it, especially because um, you own an agency and or you co-own an agency. And obviously, if you're getting an influencer to be part of a specific project, what they're known as on that specific platform that you want them to talk about that this product on matters, right? Of course it matters, right? So what do you think of cancel culture? 
like what what is to, like do you believe in it do you think it's a real thing do you think it's just um what's this smoke and mirrors like what what is like trans culture like, what do you think about trans culture um, Hard questions. I think, like, <laughs> of course. I think I think I think I'll think about it how I think about anything. Like, right. There's a lot of. I have a lot of friends, and there's a lot of people I'm surrounded by, who have a lot of like stories around them. You know, let's right. say that. And like at some point there is. Um, at some point, you have to have a human. You have to have a human look at it. You know, so like I could take one one character and I could say, well, here's all these like um, accusations about this person, or here's all these things this person has done or said or whatever. You know, and in some cases, there's like in some cases, there's like clear facts and lines that I have to acknowledge. You know, and in that case, then you've got to assess the person on that. But either way you've got to realize that we're all people. And if you've had a relationship of some kind with someone for five or 10 or two or however many years, like you've got to stand back and you've got to say, well, who is this person that I know? Um, right. And yeah. what, and like, how am I going to look at this? And I'm certainly not suggesting like, you know, you've got to back up every single person because you've once known them, but you've got to like, you've got to look at like how you've engaged and interacted with that person. You've got to look at that. You've got yeah. to look at what's happening. You know what I mean? I just think like a lot of things have become very like, um, what stops me from getting on Twitter today? Although you don't think I have it. What stops me from going on Twitter and just like, you know, talking a whole lot of trash about you, Barry, you know, I could get on Twitter today and, and, and go on like a tirade about you. And I promise you, like someone will pick it up, you know, and someone, yeah. someone will pick it up. And yeah. someone else will come. Someone else will come and say, "Yeah, you know, they need this and that." And be, and I'm going to be, you know, who's ever going right. to be able to say if I'm true or not, if that's true or not? Exactly. Maybe I just don't like you today, you know. And so, like right. for me, you've got for me, you've got to take it on a person by person, you know. And you've got to like you've got to know the per you've got to think about. Think about each person and each situation and each thing. I think. So, it, so let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, I wasn't on the list. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't on the list. It's just a question. Let's say Bang is on the rape list, and you guys want him to be part of the next um, Ray Ban. I mean, not Ray Ban. I'm um, the next Vans campaign. Um, is let that ever? Let me ask you this. Right. Do you know any celebrity in South Africa who's not on the list? No, not really. Who? Not really. I, I kind of do. I kind of do, but I no. Actually, Ricky Rick wasn't on the list. Yes, was he was. No, he wasn't. Yes. yes. He was. Yes. Shucks. Um. Um. Okay. Um, I I don't so this is why. So this is why I'm saying. This is why I'm saying. Like, and, and like in that particular time, at what which was like a tricky time, you do have to like look at each at each situation. And there were some people that we stopped working with. Right. Right. You know. List. Hey. Okay, yeah. You know, so you've got to, you've got to, you've got to dip into each person and you've got to dip into each relationship and you've got to dip into each story and you've got to spend some time to understand that, you know? Um, and it's also at the end of the day, it's ethics about how you want to run the business or how you want to engage with things because you might stop working with someone, but someone else is going to pick it up and they're going to work with you, you know, and the world is going to move on. Like they seem to move on from everything. So, you know, you've also, you've also got to look at it from like a, you know, it's just, it's the world's most impossible dilemma, trust me. Yeah, because in this, like, in this world, in this world, like, to be a man that's not accused of something, yeah. <laughs> and the reality, the reality is that's probably like majority true. So, right, right. So basically, what you're saying in a nutshell is 
whatever you read on Twitter is not a fact. Unless nothing you read on Twitter is a nothing you read on anything's a fact unless you've seen the facts. Unless, yeah. unless someone is like sitting in a court of law, and even then, do we know the facts? We don't know the facts. Does anyone right. ever know the facts about O.J. Simpson? We don't know the facts, you know. Right. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um. That's a very dramatic ending, Bangy. I don't know about that. <laughs> Why was the ending dramatic? How was that dramatic? Because I'm gonna get called out for all those for that for those. I'm gonna get taken to the cleaners for that. It's not necessarily. Look, I'm not trying to be controversial or anything. But I know. These are like, you know. These are like literally questions. Like people, not necessarily people want to know. I want to know because I, I I see things from a different perspective. You know, like I I think I personally think cancel culture is 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 is, is not a real thing because people only cancel people they don't like, and I don't fuck with that. Like I don't fuck with how um, people only want to cancel someone or bring out. Um, someone's um, um, what is, they want to air out someone's dirty laundry when it suits them best. You know what I mean? Like when 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 shit is hitting the fan, now they want to air out the dirty laundry, and I don't get that. I feel like if you if if we're gonna cancel people, and if we're gonna do this cancel culture thing, it, it should apply to everyone. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. shouldn't be a thing of Anthea is the best at what she does, and Anthea is the greatest. And uh, um, uh, what's this boss or whatever? So we can't cancel Anthea because Anthea is amazing, no matter the wrong you've done. So that's what I hate. That's the only thing I don't mess with cancel culture about is that they, the people choose who they want to hate, and when they choose to hate that person, they want to force all of us to hate them too. And yeah. I don't fuck with that. Like I don't fuck with that. You can't. You can't force me to 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 hate someone because you hate them because of a specific um, perception that someone else has told you. Like, for me, personally, it doesn't make any sense. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why I like getting a lot of people's different views on it because I know how I see it, but I do know for a fact that how I see it might not be the right way. I just think, like, it's easy for someone to, like, get online and say whatever they feel like saying. Definitely. And it's really just a battle. It's really just a battle of, like... Um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. It's really just like if you want to believe me or not. Right. You know? If you want to believe me, you, you, get, you believe and me. And I say right. something, you believe me. So, you know, just that's a lot of it, I think. Right. Right. Well, but you know. I don't really want to include this because <laughs> I told that a lot on this. Nah, don't worry. I might not include it. I'm joking now. I'm definitely going to be included in that. <laughs> I, I definitely, I mean, I almost have no choice. Almost. No, not almost. I have you no have choice. choice. <laughs> I, don't. I don't. Um, But yeah, thank you so much for your time, dude. Um, I know you, we didn't have anything much better to do, but... um. For me to talk to you, I mean, that's your time. You could have been doing anything else, so I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so stay safe. Hope to see you after these many, many more days. Sometime. Sometime. Yeah, let's hope it's soon. We ever get out, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about it out. on the shows because it's like, um, I don't want to talk about it much because we can't be facing something and talk about it too. You know what I mean? It needs to gives us such a, a morbid um, atmosphere. Yeah, I just like, like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's too much, you know exactly, what I mean? Exactly, yeah, 100%. 100%. But anyway, thank you so much, Anthea. Um, from, um, I'm, 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 I'm gone, and thank you so much for your time. Speak to you soon. Speak to you soon, okay?